Hi friends, it's Unicorn, and today I want to bring you a Sunday review of Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. This is the longest book in my Penguin English Library collection, and since this year I wanted to make an effort to read more from my collection, I decided to start from the longest one. And I also vlogged about it, but I also want to do a separate review of it since I feel like I can form a more coherent thought about this book now. First of all, I want to report back that I really enjoyed this book, although it has more than 900 pages in my edition, but it didn't feel that long because things are constantly happening. If you didn't know, Vanity Fair follows two two main characters' life, Becky Sharp and Amelia Sedley. It says in 1800 England, where women's livelihood are depend on their family and also their husband. Becky is a poor orphan who had nearly nothing, so she had to make a life of herself and socialize with people all the time, and that's also why a lot of people are looked down to her. In the meantime, Amelia came from a wealthy family, so she had nothing to worry about from the beginning, so naturally she's more tender and meet and just had no worries. And I just love the characterization of these two women so much and their development is clearly the thing that I enjoyed the most from the book. Becky, like I said, she had no one and before she became an orphan, her dad was a poor artist and her mom was an opera actress. So their family had no social status whatsoever from the beginning and she had to do a lot of things that normally in that society were done by the family of young girls to provide them. And uh, at the same time, she's also an intelligent and very ambitious young woman who's able to also do those things. So I feel like she's actually enjoy every moment of it and she's quite good at it. Becky like knows her advantages and disadvantages and she's able to use those to play around. I feel like she's definitely one of the most interesting female characters I've read in a long time. and. I just loved her how she's able to learn about new environment and learn about the social norms in different occasions so fast and so well. She also reads people so well and she's able to use her charm in different ways that fits in different situations. So I liked that, but I also see a lot of people think that's hypocritical. If you have watched my vlog about it, you know that I mentioned in Chinese Wikipedia of this book, people are using some very harsh words towards her, saying that she's disgraceful or hypocritical. And also I see English comments about her like that as well. I clearly didn't agree with those comments at all. I just feel like I love a smart ambitious heroine who's able, who's willing to achieve different things. I feel like maybe I like her so much that I kept making excuses for her behavior, but also I don't think those are excuses. For example, I feel like it's very natural for people to want a better life for themselves, especially in such a society where there's weren't many options for women. Sometimes her behaviors can seem very aggressive, but also very understandable. If you think about it, she's just very ahead of her time and that's all. I understand that sometimes when she's acting out of social norms, the consequences can be very disturbing for the people in the book. But I also think as readers, we need to recognize her more because of that. And I just can't wrap my head around the fact that she's able to read people so well and I'm Although she's a fictional character, I'm constantly amazed by her. And at the end of the day, she may be the most clear-minded person in the whole book. So I think it's very important for us to always remember that the very strong contrast of her behavior in the book is just because how women are expected were expected at that time when they were limited of what they can do and they can have a strong personality and can make decisions. The other character, Amelia Sedley, is on the other hand, completely different and opposite from Becky. She came from a comfortable family and she had uh, wealth growing up and she doesn't need to worry about anything. So like I said, she's tender and meek. She never raises her voice and she just doesn't have as strong of a personality as Becky. But all of those can also come as naive at times. When I was reading this book, I was constantly struggling and thinking about my feelings towards Amelia because I feel like I can 
I can really feel her, but in some chapters about Becky, I just feel like she's way more interesting than Amelia, and I just don't think I care about Amelia anymore. But then the wonderful thing about this, the pacing of the book and also the writing is, often at those times, the chapters jump back to Amelia's story, and I find myself still care about her. So it's like this factuated feeling towards this character. So I feel like especially because of her personality, it's very easy for us to relate to her and reserve a soft spot for her in our heart. And it's also confusing because I just couldn't figure out my feelings towards her. And I think it's the wonderful ability that the author had that captured us to continue. However, I also have a lot of times that I'm disappointed by her or frustrated with her because I just feel like she's been protected so well growing up and she's not ready to conquer the adult life. So a lot of times I was like, come on. With that being said, she's very well recognized by the characters in the book or even by the author, and she's often praised on because she's very suitable to that time period. However, not everybody has the same opinion about her. Um, actually, like not everybody has the same opinion towards like anybody, and that's another reason why I love this book. In a book with more than 900 pages, there are so many side characters in this book, but they are not redundant. They are very unique with different personalities, and their drives and motivations in life can be so different, and it's just so wonderful to read about. However, because there are so many characters, sometimes it's difficult to figure out who's who, especially for a book that written back in the days. Sometimes the characters can be addressed by their first name, sometimes they're addressed by their last name, sometimes nickname, middle name and sometimes even titles in the military or society. And not to mention that some of the men in the same families has the same names. So in some extreme cases that I, I just need to read through and go back with more context to figure out oh, who this character is. But luckily, there were not many of them. Every character grows and changes with time and for readers, it's just a wonderful time to tag along with them and see those changes and growth. Apart from the character growth, the story development is also wonderful as well. And like I said, the book doesn't feel long because things are constantly happening and there are twists all the time. And a lot of things happen unexpectedly. For example, there were one major twist in this book that I didn't see coming at all. And I was shocked and couldn't process it for a little while. It was all caught in my vlog, so you can check it out if you're curious. And besides that one major twist, there's still so many other ones. Oftentimes, when you think the things are going into one direction, it will just take a drastic turn and it will surprise you. And I loved it about it. However, in the know they were one particular part that I feel like things are slowing down a little bit but still fast just compared to other parts it's like a little bit slower and also compared to the length of the book that part wasn't that long and I don't think it matters that much and one thing is very interesting in this book is that the author has a voice he's not only writing the book but also narrates it as if he's constantly talking to the readers I actually feel like it's a common form of writing in classics. But the uniqueness of this book is that the author often spoil his own story to you. Oftentimes it happens when you see things are settling down and you started to feel satisfied. He'll be like, oh, you're satisfied? Nope, that's not what's gonna happen. So you know the present and also you know the future, but you had no clue how they connected because they just seemingly they're so different. And I loved reading about it. I'm like willingly being manipulated by the author. And also speaking of how the author talks to you, at the very beginning of the book, he clearly stated that this is indeed a book called Vanity Fair. So please don't be fooled by all the actions and uh, development for the characters because they are all chasing something vain. And the thing is, you actually don't need his reminder because as you're reading this book, you see and you can feel that every character was chasing some illusions or so much so they were chased by them. None of the characters escaped and it's indeed the premise of the book because 
It's also the title of the book. However, with us reading this book from the 21st century, I feel like we should be able to look at the whole story and the characters from a new lens. Some of the sarcasm comments that the author made for the characters in the book, I feel like they will still stand nowadays and I agree with, they're very interesting to read about. However, some of his critiques for some characters can be outdated. I feel like as readers, we need to keep in mind of that all the time. But also because of the tone of the author, you never know that if he's being sincere or not. I feel like sometimes even though he's critiquing or like using some harsh words on the characters, for example, for Becky, he's also actually secretly admires her for her cleverness and brain. So overall, the voice of the author is always there like from time to time and it's always in front of the readers. And I actually found myself having conversation with it, which is such a wonderful experience. And in the end, I actually give this book a four star. And to be honest, after talking all about these, I don't know why I deducted one star from it. I think it's more like I'm not very confident about my fondness of classics because I haven't read one for a very long time. But I feel like I should raise my rating because I really liked this book. So now I'm giving it a 4.5 star. I think the reason why, why it's still not a 5 star is because the confusing names and also the little bit time that in the middle that slows down a little bit. But maybe like after I read uh, more classics in this year, I will have like different feelings towards this book. So we shall see. And there you have it. That's my review for Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. I hope you find this review interesting and helpful. And please let me know any of your thoughts about this book. Um, have you read it? Do you like Becky? Do you have any thoughts about other characters in the story? If you haven't read it, are you interested in reading it? And don't forget to say hi in the comment section down below. Thumbs up to this video if you liked it. I wish you happy reading. Stay healthy. I'll see you in my next bookish video. Bye!